The August jobs report, a bit softer than expected. What does this mean for the Fed? Let's ask Kevin Mon, Opinion and Walsh Asset Management, and I'm Lisa Bernhard with Reuters. Kevin, the jobs report missed expectations, but it wasn't necessarily bad. Is that right? Talk us through some of the numbers. Yeah, it was a mixed report, but I think it's fair to conclude at this point in time that the jobs picture has not been ro as rosy as we were originally led to believe thus far in 2024. Case in point, in August, we saw August payrolls increase by 142,000. Sounds pretty good on the service, but it came below expectations for 161,000 jobs. Those gains were led by leisure and hospitality and healthcare and social assistance. We also saw the unemployment rate tick down from 4.3% to 4.2%. However, the Fed was forecasting unemployment to end this year at 4%. So we're already well above the Fed's expectations for unemployment in 2024. And then I look at the real unemployment rate in the United States, which came in at 7.9%, the highest it's been since October of 2021. And then we saw more downward revisions to job creations in the two prior months, similar to those downward revisions we saw through the first six months of this year. Why is this all important? Well, if the unemployment picture is going higher than the Fed expected, and if the outlook for the job market is lower than we were originally expected, that means the economy could slow further from here and perhaps has slowed down much quicker than the Federal Reserve wanted. Kevin, for those who don't know the term, explain what you mean by the real unemployment rate. Certainly. So there are two unemployment rates. The one that most people in the media focus on is the U3 unemployment rate. That came in at 4.2% in August. But if you look at the real unemployment rate, affectionately referred to as the U6 rate, which is a little bit more encompassing as it also includes people who have taken on part-time work as opposed to take, getting a full-time job. That's a much larger number of 7.9%. Essentially, that includes everyone who doesn't have a full-time job who's looking for one. That's important because that's nearly 8% right now and is the highest it's been since October of 2021. How much of a shock would it be to markets if the Fed did, in fact, cut by 50 basis points in September? Would it signal that the economy is really in trouble and royal markets? What do you think? Following today's jobs report, I believe the market is pricing in, specifically the bond market, a 50 basis point rate cut following their September meeting. As a result, if, in fact, we don't get that 50 basis point rate cut, I think the market will be disappointed and you could see some short term volatility. But I still go back to the Fed's original forecast coming into 2024, which was confirmed in their March meeting and then later updated in June, which called for three rate cuts of 25 basis points each. Look. If you look at the Federal Reserve, they are data dependent, right? So by definition, that means they're going to be backward looking and late to the party. Once again, we're finding out that they're late to the party. If, in fact, they cut by 50 basis points or more in their September meeting, I think that sends an alarming message to investors that this economic slowdown has now gotten much ahead of what the Fed anticipated and could lead into a potential recession. Kevin, we're seeing a fairly significant sell-off right now with the NASDAQ leading the way down more than 2%. So talk us through the market reaction now after this data. If I look back about three to four weeks ago, bad news was good news to investors in terms of the prospects for rate cuts. Now bad news has become bad news because those rate cuts have already been priced into the market. Now it's a question of how bad is that bad news? And we continue to see more and more signs that the jobs market isn't as rosy as we were originally led to believe with all the downward revisions that have taken place to the data that's already been reported through, now let's call it the first eight to nine months of 2024. We also know that the unemployment rate is already above the Fed's forecast for 2024. Given all of that, Will consumers, the consumer, which accounts for 70% of the economic growth in our country, now start to rein in spending? 
if they rein in spending or if they focus their attention on all of the outstanding debt that they've amassed, which leads to $1.1 trillion in outstanding credit card debt, if they start to focus on servicing that debt as opposed to spending, the economy can only slow further. And how much can the Federal Reserve do to catch up and prevent that economic slowdown from moving into a recessionary period? That's what investors are focused on right now. How bad is this going to get? How defensive do they need to be? And can and will the Fed come to the rescue once again?